Hi guys, welcome back to Dust Not Included. My name's Roy and I am here at Savers in Attleboro, Mass. Let's get in here and see if I can find anything to resell. Well, I decided to take a trip out to Massachusetts. I haven't been over in Attleboro in a while. So I decided to head out and see what I could find. On the way in, I noticed this really beautiful bridge lamp. That's gorgeous. But I grabbed my cart and I was off to the shelves. Over here on the first end cap, I noticed right away this great stone owl. It's maybe a soapstone. It's definitely Italian and carved and awfully beautiful. So I definitely picked him up. Well, the owls were coming out of the woodwork. There was this great little owl vase. I couldn't find any markings. It was probably newer, but it was awfully cute. And then these guys were great too, but they were priced at $8, which was a little high for me to resell. Oof, gotta check out the figurine aisle, right? The first item I noticed were these glass um, tribal statues. They were in like a light teal. They were awfully pretty. They were $6 each, which might have been a little high for me to resell. So I did leave those behind. I thought this Mary over here was awfully pretty, done well. These dolphins shocked me. They were a made in China piece. I think it was probably an older made in China piece. They were kind of fun though, huh? Whoa, this dog has seen something. Check out those eyes. I loved this rooster, but there was a lot of red cold paint missing to the top of his head. So I didn't pick him up. I wish the paint was just a little better. Over here, I found this adorable little guy with holding his star behind the moon. I loved him and I picked him up. There were a lot of commemorative plates. I did notice this little stone piece. It was stone and then it was painted on top. There was a chip out of it, so I didn't pick it up, but I did think it was awfully interesting. On the top shelf here, I checked out this little hand-painted vase. It was awfully pretty, but it was an anniversary piece, so I did leave it. These cups next to it were kind of fun. They were from a Renaissance fair. Kind of interesting though, huh? These little figurines here, they were Lennox. And I was debating about them. Wasn't sure, there were only two. And then I noticed there were a whole lot more of them. So I decided to do a quick comp search and they were really selling for right around where good uh, savers had them priced. So I did leave them behind. Check out this great Empoli vase. Um, I believe it would have been a decanter with a stopper on top. It was kind of cloudy. I put it in my cart and drove it around for a while. In the end, I didn't end up picking it up because I was nervous that cloudiness I wouldn't be able to get out. Just checking out the rest of the vases, I thought this newer piece here was awfully pretty. I love the um, lilies on there. I checked out this little perfume bottle. It looks like there would have been like a hummingbird or something on it that was broken off, so I left it behind.
just checking out what's on the shelves. Not much in the candle section. There was a little bag of um, newer dollar store type angels. I did leave those. I loved this little guy. Look at, it's like a little gnome or elf riding a frog. I thought he was so adorable and I really wanted to get him and I noticed he had a chip to his hand and the frog had a chip to his foot. Oh, I really liked it, but I did have to leave him behind. I checked out the little drummer boy next to it. It was an older piece, but I don't know, just a little plain I left him as well. I almost missed it, but then I noticed. Check out this candle. It's awfully neat. I didn't pick it up. I wasn't quite sure what that was on the back of it, though. But it would have been um, a candle that you'd burn every year if you had a child, all the way up to the age of 21. I once saw one in pink. It was kind of neat. I liked this turkey planter. But I'm not sure if it would have been a planter. I think it would have had a cover, which would have been the back of the turkey. So I did leave him behind because I was unsure if he was complete. This face was really interesting, but it had a chip on it. So I did not pick it up. I was checking all the planters, maybe. I was hoping to find like a McCoy planter, but no such luck. This face was really pretty. It had a nice handkerchief um, style. It actually was made to look like a handkerchief all around. It was pretty, but a little not what I was looking for today. Here's a whole set of false graphs. This is the um, Yorktown pattern. They seem to have a lot of pieces. It was a whole set. Taking a stroll down the metal aisle. And look what I found. This is a cast iron hand painted doorstop. It's a bundle of tulips with a bow. How awesome would this look? Propping your door open, just gorgeous. I had to pick it up. This basket I found interesting as well. It had all these little hand-painted apples and I thought it would be perfect for September to do a little decorating with, but there were no markings, so I couldn't attribute it to anyone. Hey guys, at the end of the video, don't forget to subscribe and like the channel. On the glassware aisle, I really liked these new glasses. They had swirls of different colors. There were only two, so I didn't pick them up, but they were really nice. Check out this planter. I debated about it. I liked the elephants in the heart. I liked this hull, H-U-L-L -L bowl here. It was a mixing bowl, but I thought it would be great for popcorn. It did have a few hairlines in it, so I did not pick it up. It was awfully cute. This here is a Fire King baking dish, and these are getting quite popular. This is all hand-painted uh, fruit on here. And I'm gonna show you the bottom that labels it Fire King. With the rising prices of Hyrax, Fire King, and Glass Bake are getting very popular. They have some beautiful designs on them, just like Pyrex. Oh, here's a great example of a glass bake piece. This one here is a divided dish.
just something to look out for. On these shelves here, I found all of these trivets, more owls, my goodness. I really liked this, I would say a partridge in a tree. Um, however, it looked like it had a lot of wear, so I didn't pick him up. This little piece was awfully pretty. It was hand painted. It was a creamer, maybe, with it looked like a pitcher and basin, but it was, you know, it's awfully small. So I'd assume it's a creamer or just a decorative piece. Just really pretty. This here is an excellent piece or example of Italian pottery. It had a bunch of chips on the handle, so I didn't pick this one up, but see, made in Italy. So this would have been made in Italy and all hand painted. Just a beautiful example. I checked out this platter. I liked the um, design around the edges. It was uh, transferware. It was an older piece by Smith. There, I got it in focus. I didn't pick it up, but I just had a look at it. This piece I got excited for, but when I touched it, it felt strange. It's hard to explain. Like, I don't think that was metal. I think that was a plastic. It felt, I kept tapping it and trying to figure it out. It did not feel like metal. It was more of a plastic. And the cobalt blue glass also felt a little off. So I left that behind. Look at this strange piece. It's a ceramic bowl with transferware designs set inside this silver aluminum rim. It was just a strange piece. I had to show it. Oh, a Christmas cake stand. Very nice. I didn't pick it up. Interesting little picture here. So this piece was not marked, but typically you can tell that these are Fenton, especially by the um, design on the edge of this creamer. That's indicative of uh, Fenton. They had a whole line of that series. Some more trivets over here. I kind of liked the design of this one. However, then I saw this one, which I liked even more because I loved all that bright painted color on here. I debated about it for a while and then I saw it said 19, I mean 1894. So this would have been a reproduction piece. It was awfully pretty and I put it in the cart to think about it. Sometimes I like to load up my cart and think about it later. Well, I'm off to the bag wall, which is my favorite section. Look at this, I found this great Kokeshi doll. It was fantastic and really large. I definitely picked her up. So I decided to check the rest of the bags. There were these angels. I decided to take them down and take a look. They were marked 1982. They were Bells by Goebel. I thought about them, but I didn't see enough other items in the bag. So I did put them back. I also looked at this little bag of dolls. They were they appeared to be handmade. There were a few different kinds. I kind of liked them, but not enough to get them. I don't know. They were awfully cute though. Over on the fabric aisle, I noticed this piece just sitting there. So I decided to open it up to see what it was. Kind of difficult with one hand. It was a scarf of a map of Massachusetts. 
kind of nice, but kind of specific, so I left it behind. I did see this great tablecloth. It was all hand stitched. However, there were a few stains on it, which maybe someone could have got out. I sometimes have trouble getting them out. Just a few stains, but I did leave it behind for somebody else. Over on the Afghan aisle, check this out. It was so pretty and colorful. I just loved it. I just couldn't stop staring at it. Yeah, it really was beautiful and vibrant. I debated and I decided to pick it up. I don't usually buy a lot of Afghans, but this one really spoke to me. So it came home with me. It's a nice lightweight, pretty colors. There were a few other Afghans on the aisle, but after seeing that beautiful colored one, they just, they just didn't hold any candle to it, really. Well, guys, every Thursday at 6.30, I have a live sale and I rotate channels with Janine's. Please come check us out. Some of these items might be in that sale. Thank you guys for shopping along with me. That was a great trip to Savers. Till next time, have a great day, guys.